What's up, y'all? I got a banger from the wall. Let's get straight into it. If you need therapy, which you do, we all do, okay? Let's just get that out of the way. I have a hack for you that Speak is for yourself, honey. Fired. Is going to change your life, and in my opinion, has at times been even more healing to me than therapy is. It's easy, it's accessible, it's fucking free. Okay, open up your phone's front camera, set it up, prop it up on something, and just start fucking talking to yourself. You are going to feel crazy at first. There's a learning curve to this, okay? Just know, just know that if you feel crazy, that's normal, it's okay. But something about looking yourself in the eyes and talking through your problems or your insecurities or even like the ways that you're mean to yourself or self-sabotaging, you have this new level of compassion for yourself. It has been so healing to me and has been the source of some of my greatest breakthroughs. So 10 out of 10, I recommend. This seems more like advice for people who are so narcissistic, they would record themselves just to feel like they're talking to themselves. Yeah, I mean, why do you need to record yourself? That's what I don't understand. Why can't you just like internalize what you're doing wrong and come to terms with it? And maybe like write down your goals, write down the things you're passionate about, write down the things that you want to achieve and create a plan. This is why they say like an idle mind is the devil's workshop, because if you don't fill up your day with things to do, your mind will wander and therefore it's, you know, it can be really toxic. So I don't know. I know the dating scene sucks, but so does getting hurt in an accident. Have you ever found yourself involved in a personal injury case? As an image consultant, I meet a lot of clients who are actually recovering from all sorts of injuries, from car accidents to workplace injuries. And I was actually surprised to see at how many people lose their personal injury cases, which is why I want to talk about Morgan and Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. They specialize in a wide variety of personal injury cases and they've won thousands of big cases and if you do end up working with them they're gonna fight for the money that you deserve just recently Morgan & Morgan solidified verdicts in Florida for 12 million dollars and 26 million dollars in Philly that's up to 40 times the highest insurance offer and I'm telling you your case could be worth millions and the best part is it's all free unless you win your case now if you've also been the victim of a personal injury or a serious accident you can visit www www.forthepeople.com slash Levi found in the description below where you can start your free claim today. It's, it's a very odd take talking to yourself. I don't know. Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you here. This one is titled, Am I the Askonaut if I break up with my fiance after she showed a startling change of behavior after getting engaged? I, male 32, just recently proposed to my girlfriend of two years, Sharon, female 30, like a month and a half ago. And it feels like the second the ring got on her finger, her attitude and behavior took a total 180. The entire time we were dating, we seemed exceptionally compatible. At least it seemed we shared common beliefs and morals. Seven weeks ago, I proposed and she said yes, and I felt like it was the happiest moment for the two of us. But not even a week later, it's like her attitude totally flipped. I thought I knew all of her friends, but one day I came home and there were six women I've never seen before, and Sharon introduced me to them. I was curious as to why I was just now meeting them when I already met Sharon's two best friends, Michelle and Octavia, both not present, over a year and a half ago. Sharon said she wanted to make sure that we were a sure thing before I met her inner circle. When getting engaged means you're a sure thing? I found I'm sorry, that, that is a huge red flag. Chat, let me know if you agree. I should know all of the friends that you have before we get engaged strange not to mention it was a weeknight and they were quickly draining my wine rack sharon still had her own place but she stayed with me so often she practically lives here still i found it incredibly rude when they left with four empty bottles of rose in their wake i tried to talk to sharon about having uninvited guests on weeknights and she dismissed my grievance very flippantly more that she brushed me off the following week she went out with the girls several times and when she brought Bro, I'm telling you if you got a girl and she's doing a lot of single girl activities she's a single girl she's a runner she's a track star I would not be putting up with this behavior I'd be like you know what the engagement's off the girls to my place twice without notice once with notice to appease me her words they all treated me like a butler shaking their empty wine glasses at me for refills <laughs> Oh hell uh, no. I mean time out because look if you brought the girlies home and I was available, I'd butler for you because I love you and that's what I would want to do. But but if some bitch starts shaking an empty wine glass at yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> Get out! 
And you, you only get like, you maybe get like one of those a year. It's just like if I had the boys over and I, you're going to be Mrs. Maid to me. Like, come on. No, leave the glass. Put the bottle down, put the glass down, and get the f*** out. More wine. Oh, hell no. Completely agree. I've been telling her to leave my house for a while now. <laughs> Plus, it's such a lack of respect from this woman. If you don't live with me, why are you bringing your friends to my place to throw a party when you have your own home? Thanks. And who's going to clean up the mess these women are going to leave behind? You see where this is going, right? If Sharon thought that putting on the ring... Well, a lot of women think once they're engaged, they're good to go. They ain't got to do no more work. And that's the, that's the complete opposite. Once you get engaged, that's when the work starts. And even even before then, that's when the work starts, really. Like, but a lot of these women think I won. I'm I'm in I'm in a fiance. I don't have to do anything else. Time I made it clear that I will get a locked wine rack. Sharon just called me no fun after that. It gets worse. Sharon decided that me and the girls got off on the wrong foot and said that we should have dinner together at a nice restaurant. Uh, you, you know that means that she wants you to buy them all a very fancy yeah. dinner, right? Absolutely. Well, I went, and it was not great. The six kept prodding me about my life, my house, my career, but they deflected every question that I asked. It got especially bad at night when they started talking about modern relationships and jealousy, and one of them brought up some key points about relationships that I thought Sharon and I were on the same page about, specifically what-ifs regarding polygamy and being friends with exes. To oh, my no. shock, Sharon said that we shouldn't be too hasty on such decisions, which was a total 180 to how she expressed herself <laughs> on these things only a month prior, where she wow. was vehemently against keeping ex-intimate partners and friend circles and was staunchly monogamous. The worst part was when the bill arrived, Sharon announced it should be together and slid me the check. I told her she can't be serious and we got into a bit of an argument. I ended it by putting my amount down in cash and walked out, leaving them to figure out the rest of the bill. The next days after that, Sharon kept calling me toxic and fragile. But every time I pushed at it, she would give me an apology and promise that she was just stressed at work. It's nuts. We haven't even planned the wedding yet. The worst part was this Monday when at work I got a Nest doorbell alert, checked and saw Sharon and one of her six new friends arriving at my place, going in and exiting with my golf clubs. This set was a gift from my father and it cost a pretty penny too. So Sharon lending it out with my permission got me pissed. I immediately called Sharon and told her. Bro, you need to just leave this chick. That's why I say, dude, don't put up with this stuff. If she's showing you this behavior now, it's only going to get worse. Leave. Why is he even entertaining this? and her friend to return the clubs. Sharon tried to gaslight me with, but you promised to lend the clubs to her boyfriend, remember? I told her the club's cost would move it into a serious crime, and her and her friend had an hour to return them or the cops would be called. Sharon kept insisting she got my permission, and I told her to cut the crap. Well, not 45 minutes later, I got another notification of Sharon and her friend coming back with the clubs and going inside, leaving them. Sharon's friend flipping off the nest doorbell on the way out. I got home and saw Sharon's friend literally just threw the clubs and bag on the living room floor. Mm -hmm. Sharon tried to talk to me about my toxicity again, and I told her again to cut the crap. I said if I knew Knew this is how she was, I never would have proposed. That seemed to freak her out, and she again insisted that she was just stressed at work, but I wasn't buying it anymore. I told her to return the ring and her key, and we would talk about our relationship this weekend. She cried, and she begged me not to cancel the engagement and insisted that it was just stress. I but this is why single women keep women single. These women are so envious and jealous that they pretty much gaslit this woman into ruining her own relationship, bro. You can't make this stuff up, bro. <laughs> It's so good. Told her again that we will talk about it this weekend. She finally relented. I had my house rekeyed anyways after she left just to be safe. Sharon has been texting me constant messages of love and apologies for getting swept up and insisting she was only wanting to show me off to her close friends. No. Is that what showing you off is like? No. I don't know. I'm just not buying it. The same close friends have been sending me texts daily calling me toxic and fragile again, saying they knew I wasn't man enough for Sharon or secure enough to share with her friends. Share? A few of my friends that knew Sharon the entire two years we were dating were surprised and can't even believe she turned hide this quick and that there must be something missing or that I'm leaving something out. They said I must have said something to trigger her friends to act like this and I had to have been the asshole somewhere along the process. I don't know. It's a lot to take from all directions right now. Fuck up, you crazy bitch whore! First, she disrespects you. Bro, at, at this point, you just got to dip. There is no way, bro. There is no way I would put up with any of that. If Cass was trying to do any of that, bro, it would have been a wrap. 
Making me pay for stuff and her friends, like, oh, bro, no way, bro. Sure, there's more to this story than we know. Before we get into the top comment and some additional information here, uh, it, the the friends being like, I don't know, you must have done something to f this up. Be like, hey, f you, by the way, like you just did something to f this up with that assessment, asshole. Yeah, it's got to be your fault, right? They wouldn't just it's always a man. They wouldn't just be like this. Now, the these friends were always like this. You didn't get introduced to them until after you put a ring on it. And then she somehow took that as you're my bitch now and treated you like her bitch in front of her friends because that's what they think is cool. And apparently to be man enough to be with her, you have to be her bitch and be willing to be treated like shit Make and let her sense. friends do the same and just take <laughs> shit from you. It's all good. That's being man enough for them. Cool. Top comment. Oh, no, dude. You need to end this relationship. She has been putting on a false front the whole time. She knows how toxic they are. She figured now that you had proposed, you couldn't leave. That's who she really is. The person you dated for two years, that's a false front to get the proposal. It's like abusers who never hurt their spouse until after they're married. Mm -hmm. They know that they need to hide it because they know it will drive the partner away. They wait till the commitment is deep enough. She showed her hand too fast and too early. Agree with that. Kick her ass to the curb immediately. Call her out on every gaslight. Every time she cries and says she's stressed or whatever, ask her why she lies 100% of the time in front of her friends then. If she's telling the truth, they can come over. And in front of her friends, she will for the whole evening disagree with them on polygamy, open relationship, your role. They need to be open, etc., etc. Tell her if she's just stressed, she must be willing now to call them and openly admit all of what she was saying with them was untrue or... This is who she is. She gave you a pleasant fiction. Bro, that is exactly who she is. Her calling her friends and saying, all oh, that stuff's untrue would just be a facade, be fake. You were alone and it was easy to hide. Now you see who she chooses to be, who she wants to be. Dump her. Well, a lot of women want to be married, but they don't want to be a wife. That's a big difference. Being married is a title. Being a wife is having duty to your husband. Move on. Date Michelle. Date Michelle? Where'd Michelle come from? Oh, one of the original, one of the OG besties. Yeah. Who, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, NTA, brother. Uh, am I the astronaut for if you broke up with her after she did this 180? N T freaking A. What do people expect? Yeah. She got too comfy. Yeah, you're, she, he's, he's not the, he's not the a hole for that. I think he's t totally justified for breaking up with her. There's no way I would stay with her. Are you out of your mind? This woman is straight crazy. Too quick. Too comfy. Too quick. I'm going to go out on a limb here and also say, Sharon uh, has been married before. Sharon's divorced. Um, but she treated her husband like this. This is what ended their marriage. The kind of people she chooses as her inner circle should tell you a lot about who she is. Yeah. I mean, if people change like this, don't don't stick around. Don't stick around. Don't do it. The problem It's the amoeba effect, right? You're only as successful as top five people you spend most time with. And if ladies are out there spending time with all these single ladies, they're going to be doing single lady activities. Absolutely single lady activities, bro. I would never, ever put up with that. Uh, this is a clip that we, uh, from the Reddit, from Desex, more modern women roast. Let's get into the good old bread and butter of the Levi Nick show here. Oh, sorry. Uh, we're going to have to switch this. Give me two shakes of a lamb's tail. Move this on over here. The wall has it set up very oddly, so. Um, boom. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas, as my grandfather would say. Minute. I'm gonna try to make you laugh. I'm gonna try. Come on. Okay. Done. Come on, man. Oh my God. Stop. Throwing everything Stop. at this man. He pushed her straight into the pool. What was that? I got the chance to see Karma <laughs> turn around on someone. Oh, that... <laughs> I hadn't seen that full clip. You've been very drunk for the last hour. Me? How are you? You. Shots <laughs> fired! Okay, I got admit that was humorous. Anger management. Therapy. Online therapy. Booty workouts. Um, forehead reduction surgery. Headaches from dehydration. Driving <laughs> lessons. The shit's chess, it ain't checkers. He came fucking prepared, bro. I don't know... <laughs> Like subscribe, ring the have... This is not a good idea. Like I've never driven your car before. And here we go. Oh. Ruined it.
It was like a sixty, seventy thousand dollar Mustang. Boy, that escalated quickly. Oh God! Oh God! Oh man! <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> it was right there. And nice save there by Rachel over to Lauren, back to Tanya. Not even fucking close. What a disaster. And now she's having a panic attack. I think she's throwing up gang signs. She is panicked. Straight airballed. Threw it up. Chunk up the deuce for the south and the north there. Good lord. With the signs afterwards? Man, that is, uh... <laughs> that is good. She's at 80, but it's only one hundred yards. <laughs> oh. How about new? No? Ooh, I can tell that hurt. No, I think she's done. Are you, like, medically speaking? What? Boring. What's one but herself? When the relationship's getting boring, what's the best thing you can do to spice it up? Have sex with someone else. <laughs> <sighs> That's she's it. a runner, she's a track star. She belongs to the streets. My boyfriend and I made a list of people we could have sex with if we got the chance. He chose Margot Robbie, Charlize Theron, and Scarlett Johansson. I chose my daughter's biology teacher, the barista at Starbucks, and his younger brother. You're a fuck. Just say it. If you don't love young, me, tell me. My younger brother, brother could never be on that list. Oh, it's Facebook. The young. barista. <laughs> That's just some yeah, bread. That's a guy. That's just that's any bread. That's a medium guy. Our daughter's teacher. No, 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 She's a runner. If, she's a track star. If those are the men she's saying that she wants, bro, let the streets have her. Man, <laughs> get the fuck out. Brother, ain't no way I would go to a restaurant and let this happen to my girl. All right, no way. No way, cuzzo. <laughs> no way! <laughs> Happiness? She gives me... Happiness? Happiness can't suck my... Oh my, oh my god! god. <laughs> We've seen this funny little challenge again, and you know what we love doing? We love getting on a trend, don't we? Oh, we're gonna see how long our day Lana can pump for. You wanna, you wanna really, you wanna really like... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look, it's hard, is it? Just, fellas, look at, look at the rigid. Look at the so rigid, rigid. ain't got no motion. I think she's going to make it to two. Careful, we're faster than this. There you go, no, that's a good pace. It's a good pace. Never say that we don't pull the weight. Go on, you give it to him, Daddy. Go on, go on, what? Go on, what? <laughs> uh, what is this one? I just bought him food, slept with him, and then sent him home in an Uber. Let's see how men like it. <laughs> Me and my free Uber home with a full stomach and an empty nut sack. <laughs> Bro realized he had free will. <laughs> I left my ass off when I saw this. <laughs> what? The little kid's a legend. <laughs> Hard for us to be contented. Oh. And he lived happily ever after. He just kicked down a whole tree. That was metal. That was so metal. Oh my god. Make sure you guys jump into the subreddit. We have 201 members. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate that. Let's jump back in the subreddit. You're an amphibian. What's that? It means you can't breathe on land and in water. You mean I'm a mermaid? No, I'm the littlest. What? Oh, okay. How women listen. I was like, what? Uh, women are incapable of being happy. I think I've reacted to this clip, but I th no. Don't say that. Because women with curly hair buy a straight. Facts. Women with straight hair buy a curl. Curler. Women with dark hair die blonde. Women with blonde hair die dark. Women with big boobs, they get breast reduction. reduction. Women with small boobs, they get implants. I mean, <laughs> you can't make that species happy. If they're if they're light skinned, they want to get darker. There is no making them happy. They got no. They got eyebrows. They shave them off and draw new ones on. 
There is no making that species happy. My man's preaching. When the Almighty created woman, he created a weird animal. Mm -hmm. He's they preaching. Anything else? No, that's it. I mean, I'm sure there's more. There, there is a lot more. Um, so there's three things. When you're looking for a chick, there's three things that most women have. Um, but you, the thing is, when you're choosing a woman, you only get two of them. It's hot, sane, and single. So if she's hot and sane, she's probably not single. If she's hot and single, she's probably not sane. If she's sane and single, she's probably not hot. <laughs> but chat, do you agree with that? Those are the three things. When you pick a chick, it's hot, sane, and single, and you only get two of them. And more than likely, you're probably going to get hot and sane, or sorry, hot and single, which means they're going to be absolutely insane. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Loki, you want some beef jerky? I'm sorry, I almost forgot, dude. Free. Sit. Wait. Free. Free. Go to your place. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality Makes You Irresistible to Women and Respected by Men. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.